Welcome back to the shop. Today I finally found the time to do some editing on uh, rather old footage from the Shaper rebuild. Um, I did a lot of machining on various parts. Uh, unfortunately I had the camera in the housing so there is no audio or just rumbling noise from the machines. It will basically just show the machining of the bits um, and parts of the reassembly of the whole unit. So what we essentially did was making a new main shaft. We made a new shaft, we made it slightly bigger so we could actually bore the main bearing a little bit bigger because that was X-shaped as well. Uh, it had a considerable amount of wear. There is some substantial wear, definitely. So, I'm gonna make that round again. One very interesting thing was the shaft had some play on the ball gear and some previous owner just used a center punch and punched some grooves or dots into the shaft to get rid of the play. Obviously that didn't help for very long. Uh, so the, the gear, the ball gear was really wobbling on the shaft and it was really, it was extremely clunky when I got it. But it was reasonably priced and uh, it wasn't far away, so you just can't say no. Someone tried to repair it with a center punch. So we will see. That's not gonna work. There's a collar on it, which was locked tight on. <coughs> well, I have to cut the shaft off. So, it's gonna make that.
Did some machining on the ball gear. Uh, so 
this is the main shaft on the inside is the ball gear so that all runs nice and through now the adjustment of this gear or the adjustment of that bearing is a bit strange because there is no register so you can slide it back and forth uh, if you go too far back the, the gear is binding if you go too far away it's rattling as we've seen in the in the other video when I did the first chips on this machine and obviously reassembled the whole thing we also fitted the motor inverter there is an, there's another video which shows how I make the pulley it's a pulley V belt system uh, because flat belts are rather difficult to get and I didn't have the right size so I just decided to make one from aluminum the motor is a 0.75 kilowatt 900 rpm motor but I can run it from zero speed to about 1500 rpm with that inverter drive so um, what I found the best speed is around about 600 rpm because it still has some issues and uh, it's clonking a little bit but uh, we're gonna address that we also made a new bushing for the slider uh, it was very oval and I basically bought, out, bought it out, reamed it out to whatever size it was and then I made a um, a fitting sleeve for it I, I think I need to replace that um, sliding brass part in, in, in the fork because it has a lot of play another idea I had was actually using some Teflon um, don't know if that works, I need to think about and the fork at the bottom of the lever basically has a lot of play because the pin there is a pin going through the machine from here to here um, the pin is has flat the problem is that I have I'm not confident that this pin comes out easily it would be nice if I can just pull it out or push it out or hammer it out or whatever and make a new one or turn it round because the other side won't be worn um, but uh, I've never seen a proper drawing how this is fitted I, th it's, I don't know if this is visible but it's, it's actually this pin which goes through the whole housing and the fork the fork just sits on that and, and clonks a lot because it's worn visible here so hopefully that's fairly visible my concern is there is some sort of bushing or I don't know if that's part of the shaft or if that's part of the housing I have no idea and again there is a lot of play and that's the reason why the machine clonks this is the sliding brass block which has a bit of play as well but uh, the the slot in the the slot in the lever has some uneven wear so I just left it as it is whatever you do it just starts binding so I need to if I want to address that I need to machine the slot square again which is a lot of work and machining that uh, slot or that part is a lot of work I could do it on the milling machine I got enough travel on the machine but the question is is it worth it at the end of the day it's not a production machine I use it occasionally um, for whatever project comes along so I think for now we just live with it there is still a lot of work to do uh, I need to address a little bit of play in the vertical slide also I scraped the gib here but it's either the ram or the gib is worn so I need to mill the the holes the mounting holes for the gib a little bit oval 
to get it further in because I'm at the end of the travel and I have some play at the back but it's spamming at the front so I need to measure the RAM. Um, there are some, there's some bad marks on the RAM as well uh, because it has, it has eaten some chips so but it's an 80 year old machine so what do we expect? There's not always people looking after it and uh, sometimes my it may, sometimes it might be used by a less skilled operator. Anyway, um, I'm, I'm quite happy with it. Uh, it does quite well. I think that was enough talking. I'm not going to switch it on today. Um, it's cold and I need to oil it first. So. If you want to see it in action, just watch one of the other Shaper videos. If you, if you look at the Shaper playlist, they're all in the playlist. Till next time.